You're listening to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community with your host, Ben Wolf. Welcome to the Win Win Podcast. This is Ben Wolf, and we're going to be learning from our guest today why it is easier to win back old clients or customers than it is to get new clients or customers. And uh, that's going to be our topic today. And, and with that, I want to pause for a second, ask a favor from you guys to make the knowledge, to make the information that we are sharing here accessible to more people according to the algorithms of the, of the all-powerful uh, tech platforms that be. Uh, please like, subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, whatever, follow, whatever it is that the platform that you are watching this or listening to this on uh, allows you to do. Please do those things. Uh, it's going to help. Me, it's going to help the audience, even more importantly, uh, have more people get access to the content and information that we're sharing, like the topic today, which is going to be shared by an individual who is the founder of Winback Labs, which helps clients win back lost customers. Uh, he's also the host of the Winback Marketing Podcast. So you see a theme here. And uh, his name is Dan Fister. Please tell me, hopefully I didn't butcher your last name. Uh, you can learn more about him at Winback Labs. Dot com. Welcome, Dan. Thanks for having me on the show, Ben. Awesome. And I guess I I did not butcher your last name. Is that what I'm Perfect. referring by Perfect. your silence? No, it's okay. uh, it was it was great, and it has been severely butchered in the past. Okay, I should have covered that before we started recording, <laughs> but I, I appreciate it. And uh, so I guess what I wanted to first get in with you, if you could tell us a story, like give us a a, a quick two minute background and context on yourself. And how you got into this uh, this laser like focus on winning back uh, former clients and customers for people? Yeah. Um, so uh, a number of years ago, I started a business with a couple of partners, and um, we had it was a subscription business, and we had over 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 time we had generated like fifty thousand customers, and retention was good, and you know things were going well. And then in two thousand and sixteen, the wheels came off. You know, we were just losing customers like crazy. And we didn't know why. We couldn't figure out why. Uh, we uh, reached out to them three times, like via email, and uh, we figured, you know, if that's not going to get them back, they're they're gone. Um, and we looked for exogenous variables. We looked for like we got hit really hard in the dot com crash. We got hit hard in the recession of two thousand and eight. But there wasn't anything bad happening then, so it was it was on us. And so. Um, I decided to do a, a full out win back campaign. It wasn't called the win back campaign. And it was just said, it was just like, go all out to get your past customers back. And um, uh, I wasn't very optimistic because I mean, basically we'd reached out to them three times. I already said they were gone. I thought they were gone for good, but our back was up against the wall. So uh, we did the program and it was a spectacular success. Like it was so shocking. Like we got a, a 57 X ROI out of the gate. Wow. Um, it was, it was basically, I I've been doing marketing for 20 years, you know, it's the fastest, I had never made that much revenue that fast at such a low cost before. So I, I just told, you know, all my friends about it. I was so excited. And over the next four years, um, I'd optimized and optimized and optimized that program because this, as I said, this was the easiest money. This, I didn't realize that these were, this was really low hanging fruit. Mm. And then I wanted to learn what other people were doing with Winback. So I did a study and got to see inside, you know, 170 other campaigns. Well, that is a that is a great and truly interesting story. And you, you sort of by outcomes, you, you sort of already answered it in your in, in the previous question. But what makes winning back past clients or customers better than going after new clients or customers? Well, there's a number of I think it, one of the big things is it comes down to um, they're, they're, they're super pre-qualified, you know, think of all the people that, you know, you cast a very wide net to get a small number of customers, right? So you've got the, the you know, the top of your funnel is very big and the bottom of your mm -hmm. funnel is very small and you've got to qualify people all through that. And, you know, basically these are very pre-qualified people, right? Um, they it's a huge difference, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a huge difference. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they have a real need for your product or they had one in the past and chances are they probably still have that need. Um, 
and they chose you above all the competition. So there's something about you, your messaging, your product that's special. So you've got this huge leg up. And, you know, a lot of people think that when somebody leaves, they leave because they're upset with you. And, you know, 40% of the time, it's got nothing to do with you at all. I mean, that's uh, some data for, that uh, ProfitWell came out with. And it's, it's really interesting because it's based on millions of, 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 uh, of businesses. And so they'll, so what you need to do, I'm sorry, we'll get into how to do it later. But, but, the, but the bottom line is that uh, you've got this, because they're pre-qualified, because you've already paid the cost of acquisition, right? To go out and get those clients, what does it cost you to, in ads or buying lists or, or, or doing whatever you do to bring people in? That's expensive. It takes a lot of re uh, uh, resources. But with Winback, you've already paid the cost of acquisition. You've mm -hmm. already created that relationship. So they've already trusted you enough to go and buy from you versus the competitor. So there's, there's all these uh, huge advantages to going after those customers. And we can go into more of them, you know, but, but those are some of them. Right. Well, let's dive into some of those differences, I guess, in terms of in terms of the conversion rate, the conversion speed, uh, the qualifying process, which you know you've spoken to, uh, the cost. Uh, you know what's the difference with upselling and cross selling is relative to going after new clients or customers. Sure. So why don't we just go, you know, touch on each of them? So we, uh, as far as the conversion rate, um, the average win back campaign brings back. 26%. That's what the, my win back study showed. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another 20% study... of the people you're reaching out to will actually buy again. Is that what you mean? Exactly. Right. And, and that, that number is for the year, right? So you might have an ongoing campaign. Some people might not be ready to buy. Now you nurture them. They, you know, they come back mm -hmm. uh, within the year. This is within one year. Um, so mm -hmm. the conversion rate is really high, like one in four. Um, and so, oh, how about more proof? Because I mean, that, that's, you know, that's just one study, right? So um, there was a study uh, uh, in the Harvard Business Review uh, by V. Kumar, 40,000 telecom, lost telecom customers. Uh, what they found is that 31% of those came back. Hmm. Um, in my own business, it's, you know, 22 to 30%. Uh, uh, come back. So there's, oh, and also marketing metrics, they, they say that the probability of winning back a past customer is 20 to 40%. So there's a, there's a lot of data around the conversion. Right. Um, as far as the conversion speed goes, uh, the study found that uh, sales cycles are 70% faster. Hmm. Um, in other words, wow. you can win back three customers, win back three old customers in the time it takes to win one new customer. Wow. And, and the reason for that is, um, you know, you've already done all the sales heavy lifting, right? You've already spent all that time building the relationship. Like how much time does that take? You know, you've, you've, you know, uh, just engaging is so much faster. Like it takes one to three touches to, uh, get in contact back with a past customer versus at least seven times as many for a cold prospect. Mm -hmm. uh, that data comes from Jeb Blunt. Um, so, so you've done all this work. And, and even closing is fast, right? You've already, you've already, you know, worked out a contract once, you know, so the second time around is it's a, it's a whole lot easier. You've, um, you know, you're already preferred vendor or you're already, a, you know, an approved vendor. Uh, if you mm -hmm. sell any kind of SaaS product, you're already in a, you know, you know, you've already gone through their security protocols and that could save mm -hmm. months. So there's so many things and they're familiar with you, right? They're they're They know you. Um, and that also, that that there's that level of trust already because they've already you know worked with you maybe for a year and you know I remember we did a a deal with um, uh, a big um, mutual fund company and we had this massive contract we had to go through you know but when that person left and went to another mutual fund company we 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 followed him. Uh, it was a very simple contract for a mutual fund company, you know, uh, because they already knew how we operated. So there's mm -hmm. already that travel, that level of trust that, you know, we do what we say. And if anything, we over deliver and bend over backwards to make things work for the customer. So the conversion speed is basically fast because you've already been through the whole process once. Right. Um, as far as uh, qualification of leads, we talked about that. Um, cost. Basically, 
they're just sitting in your CRM. They're free. These are free leads. Right. And uh, in just the, emails uh, or phone calls, right? It's, you know, things like yeah. that. Yeah. What's the cost of that? Right. You know? And so we've got, uh, uh, in the customer win back benchmark study, we found that the, the average uh, small to medium sized business, um, the average campaign generated 485K and the average cost was under 5K. Wow. And so the, the ROI is tremendous. And, um, you know, the ROI that I quoted at the beginning was 57X. And the ROI is a function, of course, of what does it cost to bring in a customer and uh, what, do they, what do they deliver? Um, a friend of mine, he does uh, win back for ball clubs. So he did, he did one for the, uh, for the Tigers and he got 173 X ROI. And basically what he did is he sent out direct mail pieces and you're getting back season subscribers. And he did another one for the, so he did one for the Rangers and he did one for the, for the, for the Tigers. Mm -hmm. And he got like 180 X in one and 173 X at the other. So it was, it's, it's crazy, you know? That's so, I mean, it's so different from new sales. And I know even with myself, I, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's like there's something going against the grain to really, you know, focus on a lot of energy on doing a, like a win back campaign. We're doing, we're doing some of it. We are, you know, we're doing it. I did a, you know, a series of reach outs not long ago, but it's like, you know, it's just so much more natural and so much more easy to focus on new sales, even though, as you've demonstrated amply, uh, you could have far more ROI, far more conversion rate, far more speed, far more, uh, far less cost on, on a, on a win back campaign than, mm -hmm. you know, than these new sales. What do you attribute it to that we, or I, and I'm sure many other people are so resistant or so just like, it's just not even in our heads or it's just, you know, where it's just, there's, why, why is it so against the grain with us? Um, I think there's two core reasons. One is people don't know the numbers. Like if they knew that, that these past people would come back, if they knew that, um, you know, people are only mad at you for so long. And if you reach out and you let them know that, you know, like we you apologize, where do we go? Where do things go sideways? How can we make things right? That alone can turn people around. You know, there's a study that Marriott did. And what they found was that people who had a problem that was fixed were actually more loyal than people who had no problem at all because you've mm. gone through something together right mm -hmm. um so so there's that whole area about the numbers and that emotional side of going into customers you think that might be uh, you know upset with you but there's the, the the bigger thing i think is it's cultural you know this is the way we do things here this is the way we built our company we built them on a, B, and C, and that's all around acquisition. Right. right. At the beginning of a company, the beginning of every new company is new sales. Exactly. And so that's just the history that we all look at. That's what's worked in the past. Right. Okay. That, right. That's a great point. Right. That just, we just see the future as, as a continuation of the past. Yeah. And, and that's a, that's a big deal. You know, this is how we've always done things. And, right. you know, there's, you know, I got some stories about crazy, I mean, where, where you've actually, you know, I, I just said it was awareness and cultural and, and there's sometimes even when the awareness is there, people don't want to reach, don't want to embrace it. Um, there is this one woman, she had this great story. Uh, she had just become the branch manager at this agency and uh, she came in and she went through the CRM and she saw dormant, 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 dormant. She saw all these dormant accounts. And the first thing she had her team work on was these dormant accounts because she knew how valuable they were. You know, in the in the agency world, relationships are everything, and you've already got these relationships, so it's it just you know faster faster time to revenue. So anyway, um, at the end of the year, you know, she had done a lot of new sales, and she had got these win back sales, and she had ended up doing seven hundred k in win back sales, and she was in this small regional office, and she won branch manager of the year. She had better sales than the Chicago office, than the New York <laughs> office, and she wow. said, "What put her over the top?" was these win back sales and so uh she was just you know beside herself you know because nobody had ever beat out new york or chicago right um, in these smaller markets and um 
what happened was she wanted to get this win back program all throughout the organization. They would have none of it. They had zero even interest. Though, even though she had the numbers. Even with that proof. Um, they, and so anyway, she ended up leaving and, you know, there was a, there was another guy and, and he, um, uh, his name's Carl Adamson. He does agile work, but anyway, he, when he was a buyer for this company, um, he really wanted to get into sales because all the, the people who were making the big money in the company were in sales. And, uh, so the, he got pestering the sales manager the sales manager finally gave him these six debt accounts, people that were never going to come back. Well, he won back the very first one and because he was a buyer, he knew that, you know, where he could, how they could both still do really well, you know, the buyer and, and the company. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think that order was like six times the company average. And, uh, uh, after he did that, he thought he was called into the CEO's office and he thought he was going to get this, you know, big, yay, you found this new source of revenue for us. But no, he got severely chastised, told not to do it anymore. And the sales manager was called in and he almost lost his job. So the sales manager who assigned the six debt accounts. Yeah, the, I'm sorry. Yeah, the sales manager is the one that assigned, assigned the six debt accounts. And the only reason Why? they did that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, to their credit, over time, they did they did change their mind, but that was the first reaction, right? right. And so I think there's this, this really visceral thing of like, this is what gave us a success in the past. We're not going to go off that track. We're very, I think we're very attached to a lot of our beliefs sometimes, and sometimes those beliefs run pretty deep. And you know what's, what's fascinating is like, there's so much proof that win back works. Like, you know, AT&T did a $68 million win back. Uh, Jeb Blunt in his book, he talks about doing a, a win back that generated 100K per week for his client. It was their biggest sales initiative of the year. It's not like this is a secret, mm -hmm. but there isn't a ton of awareness. And even when there is awareness, it's not enough to put people, some people over the top. So hopefully we understand, like hopefully where our minds are open, listening to right. all the data and the stories and examples that you're sharing. What, you know, how do you, you know, I'm a business owner. Uh, I'm a head of marketing or sales at a business. Right. How do I, what are the basics I need to know? How do I execute a win back campaign? So first you need to identify your past customers that have the best potential and what we found and what other studies have found, like the one in the Harvard Business Review, is that when a customer comes back, their lifetime value doubles or more. Okay, so they're stickier mm. customers, right? Because they've seen you, they've seen the competition, and they've chosen you again, right? right? So they're, they're stickier. So you want to pick out the people with the highest past lifetime value. So that's one factor when you want to pick out your group. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to look at recency. So the people who left the shortest time ago are the people you want to go back after like okay. people who've left say within 18 months and of course if you've got year-long contracts or monthly contracts that'll impact when you when you reach out to them so that's the first thing right you get that list so you've got this say you've got 100 past customers and 20 of them are high value and out of that and 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 out of that 20 five of them have left recently re go after those people very at the very first do a little beta with the best of the best so that you can get this idea of if if they come back, there's some hope for for win back, and then we can really optimize the process. So mm -hmm. you get that one group, and then you reach out to them all and you ask them, you know, could you give me uh, you know five minutes and just let me know where things went sideways? We want to you know we want to do better, and a lot of customers uh, will take that call. Um, and if you're uncomfortable doing that, give it out to a third party, or if you know don't have the salesperson make that call, maybe make the marketing manager or customer mm -hmm. success. You know that you know that's that's an, an easy way of you know sidestepping that possible emotional uh, uh piece mm -hmm. so you identify the people you understand um you want details on how to understand or do you want to just or how sure, much detail yeah no uh, yeah please share the okay. detail so so first go to your customer um retention people i'm sorry you know your customer success people uh, do the, go internally first get the opinions mm -hmm. of the your frontline people about why people left you mean no no yeah yeah so you ask your um uh you know <clears throat> frontline people who are taking customer complaints um 
ask them, why do you think people leave? Why do, why do you think it will take them to win them back? Talk to your customer success people. Talk to your head of sales. Talk to your head of marketing. Just get, just get data. Get this idea of, of, of why, pe why they think people are leaving. Then reach out to these people by phone, like five or 10 or 15, and you reach out and, and you keep at, and just ask this question, like, why did you leave? What could we have done better? And after probably 10 or 15 phone calls, you're gonna find that the same things keep coming up, mm -hmm. the same two or three things. And so now you know the two or three big reasons why people leave. And let's just say that one of them isn't fixable, but the other two are, okay? Mm -hmm. So then what you do is you reach out to the rest of your past customers and you send out an email survey, like something that'll take like 15 seconds to, to, to do, right? So there's gonna mm -hmm. be a high response rate. And you just say, these are the three thing, reasons why we think people leave. What are, what, what's the number one reason for you? And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get this hierarchy of those three. And mm -hmm. so you're gonna know which ones to hit in your messaging, which ones you better get fixed before you go and reach out again. And, um, uh, and then you create an offer around that, right? So then, you, the, so then you send out that offer to this small group at the top. Mm -hmm. Some, I, I, I guess 100 was a, was a low number. Let's just say it's you know, 500, okay? So okay. you've got like 50 people to reach out to. And say 26, say 10% of them, come back okay so now you've got uh five people you ask them why did you buy and so often why people buy her is a different reason than what you thought but you've mm -hmm. got to really understand why they're coming back mm. um and you know there's an interesting stat i think it's from uh, closed and they say that or from salesforce and they found that 15 percent of the uh, reps when they said why they lost a the deal they were wrong when they mm. went back to the client usually anyway. 60 six zero but one five percent got the reason right. Fifteen got it right. Wow. Out of a hundred. Wow. So you know the idea is you really don't know what's on what's going on in another pre person's head. You know there's this study done in uh, forget the name of the professor in Chicago, and what he found was that you only know you can only guess twenty percent of the time what other people are thinking, and even close family members or uh spouses it only goes up to 30 percent. so we're like wrong two-thirds of the time you know wow. so uh that's why win loss now win, why win analysis is so important like let's make sure that they're buying for the we we understand why they're buying right let's just assume that they're buying because of what they said and they're coming back because of what they said because the key here is you've got to understand what do you need to do to make them come back that's central to all of this okay mm -hmm. And then we go at the end of the campaign and there's these 45 people who didn't buy. Now we reach out to them and we ask them, why didn't you buy? Like we say it nicely, of course. But the point is, is that now you find that in this beta where you went wrong or what you could have done differently. And then, so this is all in preparation for rolling out to everybody. Then Every you roll campaign, out to everybody. Yeah. Okay, and then and then again you do the buy the 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 buy, the win analysis the loss analysis, and that's how you do that part. Now I'll just give you one more step. Um, so what you found is now you understand at the end of all this you understand why people are leaving you understand exactly what it takes to get them back, and those are the keys to the kingdom for retention. So you now you take that information, you apply it to your retention protocols, and you mm -hmm. got a better idea of who your ideal customer is. You know how to retarget, uh, fix your messaging, or modify your messaging. And um, I can give you a quick story about that, but um, that's the idea. Yeah, that's I, that was actually what I wanted to ask. It was this is a tremendous amount of information, and I, I you know I, I feel like people listening to or watching this should like rewind and then like pause every five or 10 seconds, write down notes on this or, you know, get a transcript, but this is, this is great stuff. But yeah, I, as a, as a wrap up point, I definitely would love to hear like a, a you know, a good story. Okay. So um, Tom Williams did a, uh, did a win back campaign for his company with his exec, uh, with his EVP and they found out why they were losing customers and it turned and so what it turned out was that they were selling into middle management and when the c-suites at the end of the year with the c-suite were doing budgets a lot of them would just they didn't see a value in this so what they would do is they would just um uh you know 
delete the account or just take it off the off the and they would uh, wait for somebody for middle management to defend the purchase well nobody in middle management wanted to go up against the the, uh, the c-suite so they didn't um challenge it this is you know for like 17 percent what they were losing mm -hmm. and uh so when they found this out i mean there's all these things that everybody had been doing over the years to try to increase retention increase retention they got it up to like 83 percent and they couldn't crack that nut tom found that this was the problem because he did this research mm. and so what they did was they went and had their salespeople sell go into the c-suite to resell the id the the, pro, the the product and they ended up winning back 90 percent of their lost customers <laughs> and they changed how they did sales right so now instead of selling it to middle management they sold into the c-suite hmm. and the retention went from 83 percent to 97 percent 14 percent oh increase it was crazy so um so that's a that's a story of retention uh, that's a bit of an outlier okay if you get three or four percent increase you're flying okay like a 10 million dollar company each percent is worth a hundred thousand dollars each right. year right so so that's that's a retention story and as far as for taking what you've learned and applying it right and then as far as uh the win-loss analysis goes uh a number of years ago inc magazine did a uh a win back campaign for their subscribers and at the end of the campaign they asked people the people who bought why did you buy and they asked the people who didn't buy why didn't you buy and so the people who bought the 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 theme that came up of course everybody had a different answer but the theme that came up was that people who bought wanted longer articles with uh about five takeaways and they wanted to figure them out for themselves the people who didn't buy wanted shorter articles they wanted one takeaway and they wanted it spelled out for them so that was the difference between the people who were longer higher value customers and the people who are lower value customers so what they did is they used that information now to tweak their advertising to tweak their sales so they're pushing that you know you're going to get these in-depth articles where you're going to get a number of great takeaways as opposed to if the other side would have won they would have said you know, these are short articles you can you can read quick you know you're busy busy executives and we're going to tell you what the what the conclusion is like what the takeaway is so there's just, this is just so rich i mean this is why mm -hmm. i get so excited about this you know because as a marketer you know when you find something special um it's exciting so yeah now that is super exciting you shared tremendous rich detail information that people can use i think on executing this themselves you this is you know but it does sound like these you know it's a, it's a, it's a big effort and uh and so it's a big project and look if people are wanting to look at getting help on this obviously they could reach out to you at winbacklabs.com uh dan fister uh just truly appreciate you making the time sharing everything that you've shared all the data that you've shared your expertise is shining through really really appreciate you making the time for this again winbacklabs.com and really appreciate you coming on thanks for having me ben appreciate it awesome thank you and everybody else we will see you on the other side thank you you're listening to Win Win, an entrepreneurial community with your host, Ben Wolf.